music just played is from the New World Symphony. The piece is popularly titled Going Home. Going home to a new world has the meaning of a trip to paradise. As a child I was in paradise when our family would be together and enjoy the feast of the holiday. If so, I have been there, in paradise. Was it paradise when I went off to a camp in the Adirondacks? If that was paradise, I had been there, although I didn't appreciate it for seasons to come. When I met my wife for the first time, it must have been paradise. I've been there. It may have been paradise when I retreated to the mountains, finding peace with the world and peace with myself. That certainly must have been paradise. However, in recent years I found peace and harmony with my family, my wife, my children, and grandchildren. True paradise. I remember myself. At the age of 10, I was sent off to a camp in Lake George. The card I mailed home stated, this is a great place, but not for me. The card is still in my papers, and I lived with that statement all my life. Possibly it is yet appropriate. This should not be a mournful time, rather a celebration of life. A life of fourscore years, a life of grief and joys, the memory of sorrows faded while the pleasures were forever fresh. My measure overflowed. This is no time to grieve. Cherish the memory of those pleasant moments we spent together. I need not recite my accomplishments. To those who knew me, to others there is little to relate. I am indebted to a few people who helped me along the way in my youth. This was in the early years of scouting. They instilled within me the feeling that something must be given back for all the good I have received. I have taken back much knowledge and have given back knowledge to others. I have taken responsibility as I have assigned some. In youth I was told that I must be a can-do and not a can-do. That remained as my motto all my life. I was determined that anything I undertook I would accomplish. My life was a simple one. My needs were fulfilled and for recognition it was imperative that I recognize my own accomplishments not depending upon others who might say Good. Mine was a life with little regrets. I spent my entire life in the city of Albany, New York. When I was born in 1910, it was not much of a city. I have pictures of early days when there were wooden sidewalks, when the trolley car ran down Pearl Street. I remember the first automobiles, I was almost a casualty of one of the first of them when I was two years old. And in growing up, I've had the misfortune of losing my sister in an accident. And life has never been the same since that day as far as my mother was concerned, my family was concerned. And although I was just six years old, I carried the brunt of that all the living days of my mother because it was my responsibility. I was noble in doing everything I could to make comfortable life comfortable for her. And in later days, my father, I've taken care of him as much as anybody could ask for. I have no regrets whatsoever of any of the things that I've done in life. And I would very happy to be called upon to do those things. I believe those are my attributes. And my family, that's all I ask for, is that they live in harmony amongst themselves with an understanding of the righteousness of life and accomplishing everything that they set out to do and an understanding 
that in the family is the strength of living. The music just played was Tromerai by Vladimir Horowitz. Tromerai may be translated as dreams or fantasies, beautiful pleasant thoughts of personal happenings. It is the stimulant which urges one to face the boredom of a daily existence with hopes of a better tomorrow. Each of us has his own fantasies, searching for prosperity, for peace on earth, awaiting an even better life in after life. To me, living in the here had more significance than spending my days hoping for a better hereafter. These dreams and hopes within us makes the realities and hardships of life bearable. The dreams of a better tomorrow for us and our loved ones, together with living in harmony with all life, is the most significant thing of living at all. What excitement to be living in this past 20th century for me. It all happened in my lifetime. I spoke of the automobile in 1912. A match was needed to light the lamps on that car. The good roads were cobblestoned, the others were merely mud. I was two when an early plane flew all the way from New York and landed in the field, which is now the port of Albany. The telephone was a strange device, then people feared it and considered it a tool of the devil. At the age of 10, I made a radio out of an oatmeal box, and at 13, I built one out of the first vacuum tube. The first TV I saw was the size of a postage stamp broadcast all the way from Schenectady to Albany. In housing, running water and central heat was merely a dream in 1910. The advancements in medicine was still in the laboratory. I lived through two world wars and several epidemics, and I am still excited by the wonders of science and people and their concern for the environment. It was early in the 40s when I assisted in some small way to erect a computer which took up an entire gymnasium. It was the wonder of modern science. Today a more efficient one would fit into one's pocket. In the fall of 1953, our family drove up Mount Greylock in Massachusetts. The car radio blared out that the Russians sent a missile into outer space. Unbelievable. This coming from a country where we were told the inhabitants could not fathom the fact that water comes through the walls of a house. That was the day the world changed. To live and see man's journey to the moon and return is still the greatest achievement that I could ever think of. And this is all trauma I, dreams that were fulfilled. And leaving 
this earth, my thoughts are with Verdi and his opera Nabucco about the Hebrews in Babylon. This contains a passage, the hymn of the Hebrew slaves. For hundreds of generations, the traumarai of the Hebrews were in going home to an old world, Israel. I've seen this dream fulfilled in my lifetime. Still, the unwillingness to strive for unity amongst our people keeps the future uncertain. Are we yet destined to remain slaves? Play on, Verdi. Let the winds carry the sounds of your music to another world, wherever it may be.